This is Apollo Control at uh, 33 hours, 34 minutes. Uh, we've been advised that we are getting uh, television transmission from Goldstone uh, at the present time. Uh, this is an unscheduled uh, TV transmission, apparently the crew checking out uh, their onboard system. We have uh, lost lock on the uh, high gain antenna at this time. Uh, Apollo 11 is presently 127,991 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of about 4,400 feet per second. Uh, the regularly scheduled time for the uh, television transmission uh, is 6.47 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and uh, we are anticipating that that uh, transmission will occur as scheduled. We're getting momentary lock-on. We seem to have a somewhat better picture now. And here's a call to the crew from Capcom, Charlie Duke. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead, Charlie. Hi, uh, Roger. Uh, latest on Luna 15, TAS, uh, TAS reported this morning that the spacecraft was placed in an orbit uh, close to the lunar surface, and uh, everything seems to be uh, functioning normally on a vehicle. Uh, Sir Bernard Lovell uh, says the craft ap appears to be in an orbit of about 62 nautical miles. Over. Okay, thanks, sir. And uh, also, uh, President Nixon has reported or has declared uh, a day of participation on Monday for all uh, federal employees to enable everybody to follow your activities on the surface. Uh, many state and city governments and businesses throughout the country are also giving their employees the day off, so it looks like you're going to have a pretty large audience for the BDA. 
This is Apollo Control at uh, 33 hours, 41 minutes. Uh, we are going to be standing by here in Mission Control for the possibility that the uh, crew would want to transmit that uh, television pass early. The scheduled time for it was uh, 6.47 Central Daylight Time. Uh, about 15 minutes was scheduled. That would be at a ground elapsed time of 34 hours. Uh, we will have the uh, system set up here in Mission Control to receive and uh, release television should the crew decide to send us the transmission early.
This is Apollo Control at uh, 33 hours 45 minutes. And we do have a correction to the time given for the beginning of that TV nominally. Uh, the flight plan time is beginning at 34 hours uh, to 34 hours 15 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, the previous conversion of that that we gave you for central daylight time was in error. It should be 6.32 p.m. central daylight time beginning, uh, assuming uh, we start as the flight plan nominally has the transmission listed at uh, 34 hours ground elapsed time. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 128,431 nautical miles from Earth, and uh, the velocity continuing to drop off slowly uh, now reads 4,386 feet per second. Uh, you heard that comment from the crew. They stopped their passive thermal control. They're starting up the TV. And we'll be standing by for, uh, for a picture.
Apollo 11 Houston, we have you uh, stopped in the PTC. Uh, attitude looks good to us. Uh, in fact, I'd like to get a com check. The last couple of uh, transmissions from the spacecraft have been uh, garbled uh, from especially Buzz. Uh, could you both give me a com check? Over. Roger, Charlie. It's Buzz here. How do you read? One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, Roger, uh, you're about four by with a, a slight uh, decrease, increase in uh, volume, uh, sort of a, uh, a wavy volume to it. Over. Okay, I move my mic around. Uh, how about now? Is this any better? Hey, that's beautiful right there. Thank you. Okay, Charlie. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. How do you read me? Roger. Bye, bye. Is Neil on? Uh, Roger, Neil. You're fine, bye. This is Apollo Control at uh, 33 hours, 57 minutes. Uh, we're less than three minutes now from the scheduled television transmission uh, from Apollo 11. We're continuing to stand by for that.
We've also been asked to advise that the Delta launch of Intelsat 3, scheduled for Friday night at 10 p.m., has been postponed for 24 hours. Uh, to repeat, the Delta launch of Intelsat 3, scheduled for Friday night at 10 p.m., has been postponed for 24 hours. Uh, further details on that will be available in the news center. Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, we got the network all configured for the TV. You can uh, start any time you want, over. We have a picture. We see the Earth right in the center of the screen. Over. K11. We have a picture. We see the Earth right in the center of the screen. Over. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11, calling in from about 130,000 miles out, and uh, we'll zoom our camera in slowly uh, to get the most magnification we can. Uh, over. Roger. This view is coming to us from about 129,000 nautical miles. Eleven Houston, uh, the uh, definition is uh, pretty good on our monitor here. The color's not too uh, varsity, at least on this set. Uh, could you describe what you're uh, looking at? Over. Roger, you're seeing Earth is uh, about uh, the
a definite blue cap. The white bands of major cloud formations across the Earth. And in the coastlines, we got uh, the western U.S., San Joaquin Valley, the Sierra Mountain Range, the peninsula of Baja California, and in the sun cloud formations over uh, southeastern U.S., there's one uh, definite uh, mild storm southwest of Alaska, looks like about uh, 500 to 1,000 miles, and another uh, very minor storm showing uh, the south end of the screen near the, uh, oh, a long way south of the equator, probably uh, 45 degrees or more south latitude. Can pick out uh, the ground, the browns uh, in the land forms pretty well. The greens do not show up very well. Uh, some greens showing uh, along the uh, northeastern, northwestern coast of the United States and uh, northwestern coast of Canada. Uh, Roger, right, Levin. It's a uh, pretty good picture on clarity here. We're heading. Uh, can you tell us? Uh, it appears to us that there are two distinct uh, uh, cloud formations that are trending uh, east-west, one approximately about around the equator and one around uh, 30 uh, or so uh, south latitude. Uh, is, uh, could you tell us exactly where those cross the, the uh, land masses are? Well, uh, that's a very
Apollo 11 Houston uh, appears to us that uh, we're seeing a view from outside plus a little of the uh, of the inside. It appears you've taken the camera away from the left window. Now over. That's correct. We're uh, moving it back and uh, reconfiguring for uh, interior lighting. Roger. So we can still see the earth uh, through the left window and it appears that uh, we can see a floodlight uh, off to the left, either that or some sun shafting through the hatch window. It's a floodlight. Uh, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that is. That's uh, Big Mike Collins there. There you go, a little bit of... Yeah, uh, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil is in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Uh, Roger, uh, it's uh, a little dark uh, now, Levin. Uh, maybe a, a bigger S-dot might help. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting a lot better now, Levin. Uh, Mike, you coming in uh, bye-bye. I got a good... Well, I put on a coat and tie if I know about this ahead of time. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? Cue cards have a no. We have, we have no intention of competing with the professionals, believe me. We are very comfortable up here, though. We do have a happy home. Uh, there's plenty of room for the three of us, and uh, I think uh, we're all learning to find our favorite little corner to uh, to sit in. The zero G is very comfortable, but uh, after a while, you get to the point where you sort of get tired of rattling around and banging off the ceiling and the floor and the side. So you uh, you tend to find a, a little corner somewhere and put your knees up or something like that to wedge yourself in, and that seems more at home. Uh, Roger, uh, looks like uh, Neil is coming in five by there. Uh, Eleven, uh, Mike, see you in the background. Uh, the, the definition is uh, really outstanding. The uh, colors are good. Uh, it's a, a real good picture we're getting here. The Commander Armstrong. Uh, we, uh, when you sh uh, Buzz, when you take the camera over towards the uh, window with the sun chanting through it, send to a, a blanket out though. Yeah, Neil's standing on his head again. He's trying to make me nervous. Uh, Roger. He's disappearing up into the tunnel, of course, uh, as he went going into the litter module only backwards. Uh, Roger, we can see portions of the LAP now, the system test meter panel uh, in the lower part of the picture, or we did have it anyway. Okay, and then directly behind his head are our optical instruments, the section and the telescope that we use to take uh, sightings with. All right, the copy, and we see the disc key flashing with a 651. In fact, we can read registers one and two quite clearly. Yeah, the old high gain uh, angle telling us which way the earth is. Ah, uh, copy. That's a beautiful picture. Clarity is outstanding. We can also give you the time of day in, uh, in our system of mission elapsed time, elapsed time, 34 hours, 16 minutes, and 15 seconds. Roger, see that uh, clearly enough, Charlie? Uh, Roger, Paul Level. We can see it counting up every uh, every second. Uh, we got 34, 17, uh, zero, 02 now. Okay, back to the high gain angles. Uh, Roger. Swing in. Now we've amputated those.
11 uh, Houston. Uh, it's, uh, we have a beautiful rainbow there, and as you move the camera around, uh, actually, uh, it uh, looks like the star chart coming into view now. Over. Yeah, those are both of the two star charts that he uh, is using right now as sunshades over the uh, right-hand window, window number five. Uh, Roger, we see the sun shining in through it behind him and uh, plotting out the uh, uh, equator, uh, correction, the ecliptic plane and uh, the stars that you're using for the navigation. You're right. He doesn't really need the charts, he's got them memorized, this is for show. So we got the, well, we're uh, pointing up in this direction. We see out our side windows, the sun going by, and of course, out one of our windows right now, we've got the earth. Now, right behind my window, where we have the sun, because the sun is illuminating the uh, star chart that we see. This line represents the ecliptic plane, and uh, these lines, vertical lines, represent our uh, reference system that uh, the spacecraft using at this time. As we approach the moon, uh, the moon will gradually grow larger and larger in size, and eventually it will be in uh, eclipse. It will be eclipsing the uh, sun as we go behind it as we approach the uh, lunar orbit insertion maneuver. All right, 11. Uh, we've, uh, could you attempt a little bit better fo focus there, 11, uh, over? Houston, uh, that's uh, a lot better on the star chart now. We can uh, make out the ecliptic plane and the, uh, the planets and the, the sun and the moon as it uh, as they're drawn at various places uh, throughout the ecliptic plane. Okay, Charlie. Houston, we see a uh, box full of goodies there, over. Oh, we really have, Charlie. We got all kinds of good stuff. We've got 
coffee up here in the upper left and uh, various uh, breakfast items, uh, bacon uh, in little small bites and uh, beverages like uh, fruit drink. And over in the center part we have uh, oh, all kinds of things. Let me pull one out here and see what it is. Would you believe you're looking at uh, chicken stew here? All you have to do is three ounces of hot water for five or ten minutes. Now we get our our hot water out of a little spigot up here with a uh, a filter on it that that filters any gases that may be in the drinking water out, and uh, we just stick the uh, the end of this little tube in the end of the spigot and uh, pull the trigger three times for three ounces of hot water, and then mush it up and uh, slice the end off it, and there you go. Beautiful chicken stew. Sounds delicious. Yeah, the food so far has been very good. Uh, we couldn't be happier with it. Roger. The surgeons are saying thank you there for that. And uh, it is sort of down in a dark corner, so uh, we have a flashlight here to, to help us uh, see things. And uh, if I can let go of it carefully, it'll uh, just hold itself right where it is. Ah, Roger. As long as it's there, it will. He's had some pretty good demonstration. You started off really stable there, Mike. It's, uh... Well, the problem is, no matter how carefully you let go, uh, you bump it just a tiny little bit, set it in motion, and uh, once in motion, there she goes. Try that again. Uh, it looks uh, fairly stable now with slow rotation. Uh, Charlie, we checked out the cable length and uh, we're thinking we might want to uh, see if we can take the TV into the uh, uh, line with us tomorrow for uh, part of the time. Over. Roger. Good show. Uh, we'd like to see it if uh, it'll reach that far. Over. We'll give it a try. Roger. Mm -hmm. 
11, uh, Houston, uh, we have the patch. Uh, could you attempt to prove the focus slightly over? Houston, the scan on the camera uh, makes the, uh, uh, that's a little bit better now. The uh, flashlight seems to flicker uh, due to the scan on the uh, TV. We can't see the eagle. Uh, now that's a, a little bit better, over. Could you open the F-stop uh, a little bit more, over? Houston, uh, the color is uh, better now. It's coming in. Uh, we could uh, attempt a little bit better focus on it. Uh, uh, there we go. Our focus is uh, a lot better now. We see the eagle uh, coming right in on the lunar surface. Over. Uh, that's very good now. Houston, that's very good now. We can see the Earth in the background, Apollo 11, and the Eagle coming in. Probably pretty hard to see the olive branch. Uh, Roger, it is. Well, that's what he has in his talent, is an olive branch. Copy. Houston, uh, we're really impressed with the clarity and the detail that we have in the picture. The, the colors are, uh, and it's a really an excellent picture now that I'm looking out on a monitor, which is about 12 seconds before the uh, networks uh, can uh, get it out due to the uh, conversion that we have here on our TV converter. The, uh, we're looking at the uh, uh, controls and display, the main display console, and we can see the uh, disky uh, up on the, the panel, over.
that's a good demonstration of how uh, the crew has the interface with the computer talking to the uh, programs and all that we have in the computer. Well, that's right, Charlie. Sometimes it tells us things and sometimes we tell it things and mostly it talks to us. Eleven Houston, Houston. We just lost our pick. I see we're going back outside now. Over. Eleven Houston, you copy over. All right, we copy and. Uh, This is Apollo Control. That uh, TV transmission uh, lasted about uh, 35 minutes. Houston Apollo 11, how are we uh, stand on this O2 uh, fuel cell purge? You want to go ahead and do that as uh, scheduled in the flight plan? Stand by 11, over. Okay. 11 Houston, you can commence the O2 fuel cell purge now if you'd like, over. Okay, fine. While Buzz is doing that, I'll change the lithium hydroxide. Right.
Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, Roger, Buzz. Uh, the attitude that we're in right now is a convenient one to start PTC in. We'd be satisfied with this attitude. So we'd like you to disable quads Charlie and Delta, and we'll wait about five to ten minutes, and then we'll establish the PTC over. Roger, disable Charlie and Delta, and we'll wait uh, before starting PTC. Roger. Retro, you got your block data. This is Apollo Control at uh, 34 hours, 46 minutes. Apollo 11 is presently 131,000 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of about 4,300 feet per second. During the uh, TV transmission, 
The crew advised that uh, they may possibly be able to take the color television camera into the lunar module with them tomorrow at about 56 hours, 30 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, they reported that the cables had been checked and appeared to be long enough to uh, take them into the uh, lunar module. During the next hour or so, the uh, activity here in Mission Control will be uh, revolving around getting the crew set up for their rest period and eat period. Uh, this will be a very long rest period tonight, scheduled 10 hours. And that uh, will begin, according to the flight plan, at about 37 hours ground elapsed time. Uh, However, we would anticipate if uh, activities move along as they appear to be at this point, we are somewhat ahead of the flight plan, that uh, perhaps again tonight we would be able to get the crew into their rest period and uh, sleep period a little bit early. At uh, 34 hours, 48 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston.
This is Apollo Control at 35 hours, 13 minutes. Uh, Apollo 11 is presently about 93,265 nautical miles from the moon. And uh, with respect to the moon, it's traveling at a speed of about 4,019 feet per second. At this time, we are receiving the uh, tape playback, which Goldstone, the tracking site at Goldstone, California, received. Uh, from the spacecraft 
uh, in that earlier unscheduled TV transmission. Uh, this was a, uh, a test of the system using the spacecraft on the antennas, the small omnidirectional antennas. Uh, normally transmissions uh, from this distance in space would, be, uh, would require the high gain antenna. Uh, this uh, television transmission is being processed uh, and converted to color and we anticipate that we'll have it available for playback at about 9 p.m. Uh, we are in conversation with the spacecraft at uh, this time and we'll pick up the tape recorded conversation that we, ha we have and then uh, stand by to follow any live conversation. And uh, would you uh, take in uh, what your request is? Uh, Roger, 11, we'd like you to go uh, back to Attitude Hole, over. Roger. 11, Houston, looks like we're going to have to reinitialize uh, re this uh, TTC. All right. Okay, do you have any uh, roll angle that you'd like to stop it in, uh, Charlie? I haven't stopped it yet. Stand by. Uh, 11 Houston, it's uh, your preference uh, right now if you want to, over. Okay. Apollo 11 Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, Roger, 11, the problem on that uh, initial starting up the PTC was we failed to do the verb 49, which uh, and load the desired initial attitude. Uh, so the that tried to take it back to the old attitude that uh, we had started up in a number of hours ago. That's why we picked up the rates in the other axes. Uh, we're going to wait in this attitude for about 20 minutes to damp out the rates again. And then we'll proceed with the uh, verb 49 and, the lo and load our attitude that we have at the time at this time over. Okay, it sounds good, Charlie. When you get to uh, the verb 49, uh, I'd like for you to give me the three gimbal angle that you want loaded. Uh, Roger, we will do over. Thank you. And Apollo 11, Houston, we have your flyby pad. If you're ready to copy over. Stand by one. Houston Apollo 11, is that P-30 pad? That's affirmative, over. Okay, ready to copy. All right, Buzz. It's flyby is the purpose. STS, GNN. 6-2-8-1-5 plus 0 9 7 minus 0 Two zero zero seven zero five four five nine or four four minus zero 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 two eight plus zero 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 two three plus Zero 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 six nine er zero two nine er one four nine er three one two Apache is in a plus zero zero two two one zero 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 seven eight Zero zero one zero 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 three four sextant star zero one two one eight five two two seven foresight star is in a in a in a Latitude, 
is minus zero two six five minus one six five zero zero one one eight nine or nine or three six two two eight one four four five six four seven in the comments your set stars are Deneb and Vega zero zero seven one four four zero six eight no ullage it's a docked burn using the PTC rest mat. Stand by for your read back over. Okay, would you give me the GET of uh, 0.05 G again, please? Uh, Roger. One, four, four, five, six, four, seven. Over. Roger, fly by SPS GNN. Six two eight one five plus zero nine or seven minus zero two zero zero seven zero five four five nine or four four minus zero 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 two eight plus zero 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 two three plus zero 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 six nine or two six nine or one four nine or three one two N A plus zero zero two two one Zero 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 seven eight zero zero one zero 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 three four zero one two one eight five two two seven and a minus zero two six five minus one six five zero zero one one eight nine or nine or three six two two eight one four four five six four seven. Janet and Vega zero zero seven one four four zero six eight. No knowledge. Doc CTC rest right over. All right, just say again your uh, roll angle, Buzz. I copy. I read uh, zero two nine or over. Roger zero two nine or. Uh, Roger, good read back. Yes, the power eleven on the seven tenths rate. The rate loaded into the DAP is one uh, or two tenths. Eleven, Roger. Hello, Apollo eleven, Houston, over. Yes, the power eleven, go. Uh, Roger, Mike, would you please uh, copy down your uh, verb 16, noun 20, ICDU angles now, then execute uh, verb 49, and load that those angles, the noun 20 that you see on the disk, into the verb, into the noun 22 slot, and pro on that, and uh, that'll start our 20 minute wait period over. Okay, Charlie, I'll do that right now. And just a matter of interest, those numbers are plus zero four five one one, plus zero nine zero two one, and plus three five nine or eight four. Over. Uh, Roger. Yes, the power eleven. I've done that, and of course I got an immediate fifty eighteen. So I guess we're set up to proceed from here, and I'll start the twenty minute timer. That's affirmative. Yes, and I still question that seven tenths rate with two tenths loaded into the depth, though. Could you uh, explain that one? Roger, we're working on it. Stand by one. Okay.
Apollo 11, Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 11. Roger, we got a little laser visual experiment we'd like to uh, for you to do for us. If you if you got the Earth uh, through any of your windows or through the telescope, would you so advise? Over. Yeah, uh, stand by right one, Charlie. Uh, at this low attitude, what should our uh, high gain angles be? Maybe that would help us locate you. We don't see you at all, man. Stand by. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, those high gain angles are pitch minus seven zero, y'all nine zero. We think the Earth is apparently pretty close to plus the axis, over. Okay. Okay, Charlie, I got you in the uh, telescope. Roger, Apollo 11. We got a laser that we're going to, it's a blue-green laser that we're going to flash on and off at a frequency of on for a second, off for a second. It's coming out of McDonald Observatory uh, near El Paso, which is, should be right on the Terminator right inside the Terminator. We're going to activate that momentarily. Would you please uh, take a look to the telescope and see if you can see it. Over. Telescope or sector? Either one. Over. Okay, I'll start with the telescope, and if I don't see it there, then I'll try the sector. Roger. Uh, we'll give you the word when they've got it turned on. Over. Okay. Eleven Houston, they don't have it turned on yet. We'll give you the word when they got it turned on over. Okay.
Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, we noticed the crowd pressure drop a moment, uh, moment ago. Did you stir up the crowds, over? Roger, we've uh, finished uh, cycling operations. Roger, copy out. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. McDonald's got the laser turned on. Would you take a look? Over. Okay, Charlie. It's bluish green.
11 Houston we got some shaft and trunnion for you that might uh, tweak it up a little bit uh, shaft of 141.5 trunnion of 39.5 over Apollo 11, Houston, if you see it, it should be coming up, appear to be coming up through the clouds. Uh, McDonald reports that there's a break in the clouds that they're beaming this thing through, over. Roger. Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, you can terminate the exercise on the laser. Our rates are steady enough now for it to commence the PTC over. Okay, Houston, uh, neither Neil nor Mike can see it. Uh, incidentally, those shafts and trillions uh, uh, just missed pointing at the world. Roger, thank you. As, as we uh, are looking at it through the uh, scanning telescope, it would be about a, oh, maybe a third of an Earth uh, radii high into the left. Roger. But we did, but we did identify the El Paso area, and it appeared to us to be a break in the clouds there, and we looked in that break and saw nothing. Roger. Thank you much, Al.
Houston, Apollo 11, over. Roger, go ahead, over. Were you following that on the disc game? Roger, stand by. Eleven, Houston. Uh, what's your exact question? Over. Well, I follow the procedure uh, through step seven down to the point where I got twenty-seven three zero three enter, and this resulted in an operator air light. All right, stand by. Apollo 11, Houston, stand by a moment. We'll have an answer for you momentarily. Over. Okay, appreciate it, Charlie. Now the lights gone out without any further disky action. Roger. Ah, uh, correction. Stand by. That's not so. Roger.
Small Palm 11, Houston. Houston, Palm 11. Roger, we finally got concurrence on uh, a problem here and with 50 guys looking at it. Uh, when we uh, were sitting in the 5018, we attempted to load the erasable before you terminated the VERP 49. So, Mike, what we're going to have to do is call up the present CDUs, copy those down, and do a VERP 49, load the present, then do a proceed, then an enter, and then we can uh, then set up attitude hole on step six. Over. Okay. I think that's what we did last time. It, it appeared to us that we attempted to load the erasable prior to entering on the uh, the verb 49, which uh, verb 49 was uh, still running and it clobbered the uh, CDUs over. Okay. <laughs> 